guys, welcome to Wong Chemistry Channel. This video is the part 4 video of your topic 6.2 talking about equilibrium constant. And in this video, we are going to discuss about quotient, your Q. So we are going to look at what makes your QP and your KP different. Same goes to your QC and also your KC. So when are we going to use your K and when are we going to use your Q? Alright, let's see. First and foremost, your quotient Q over here, the expression of your Q is the same as you are writing the expression for K. In the other words, we are still going to have your product to the power of its coefficient over the reactant to the power of its coefficient. It's going to be the same. The same thing will be applied from your KC to your QC. Your QC will be taking count of the gas and also the aqueous. The same thing in your KP, your QP will only take count of the gas. So, how do you write the Q and how do you write the K will be exactly the same, alright? So, for example, in this balance equation, all of them are gas. So, your QC, QP will be the same as your KC, KP. So, let us write the KC first. If you remember, the KC shall look something like this, where you have the concentration of the product, to the power of 1 because the coefficient is 1. And another product is your Cl2 to the power of 1 because the coefficient is 1. Okay? And then over with the concentration of Co, Cl2 to the power of 1 as well because the coefficient is 1. Agree? And the same formula you will write for your QC. Your QC will look exactly the same like your KC. Alright, we will still take count of the gas. We are still taking the product to the power of its coefficient over the reactant to the power of its coefficient. The formula of the KC and QC will be exactly the same. The same thing will apply to your KP. The KP will also taking the partial pressure of your product gas to the power of 1 times with the partial pressure of the chlorine gas to the power of 1 over the partial pressure of COCl2 to the power of 1. Therefore, your QP will also look exactly the same because like we agree, the expression or the formula to write your QC, QP will be the same as your KC, KP. So I hope right now you can write your QC, QP correctly. Bear that in mind, when it's a QC, we will take count of the gas and also aqueous. When it's a QP, we will take count only gas. Bear that in mind, okay? If they are the same, then what makes your K and your Q different? The value that you put in will make them different, okay? Bear that in mind, your KC and your KP is your equilibrium constant with respect to concentration. Equilibrium constant with respect to pressure. Since your K is an equilibrium constant, the value that you substitute in must be the value at equilibrium. All the pressure or the concentration that you substitute in into your Kc or Kp must be the value at equilibrium. Okay? While for your Qc and Qp over here, the value that you put in is not at equilibrium or I would say we don't know that the value has achieved equilibrium or not. That's why we need to check with the Q, alright? We doesn't know that the value given in the question or the values given to you is at equilibrium or is not at equilibrium. Then we use the Q, alright? So the quotient Q over here is actually to identify the condition right now is at equilibrium or not, okay? So make sure you know what are the differences. Make sure you know that the value you have is the value at equilibrium or not equilibrium. Okay? Simple. And for this Q, we are going to compare it with your equilibrium constant K. So comparing your Q and your K having three conditions to identify whether your system is at equilibrium, before the equilibrium, or after the equilibrium. Okay? So first and foremost, let's start off with when your QC is equals to your KC or when your QP is equals to your KP. If the Q is equals to the K, then it's quite obvious that your system is at equilibrium. 
all right the value that you have the data that you have right now is at equilibrium because they are the same with the equilibrium constant so when your q is equals to the k your system is at equilibrium and when your system is at equilibrium the reaction will not shift because it's already at equilibrium your reaction doesn't need to do anything your system doesn't need to do anything to achieve equilibrium it will just remain that well it's already at the position that you want you already achieve equilibrium okay so make sure you remember when the q equals to k your system is at equilibrium and the reaction will not shift okay simple and the next step we have is when your qc is less than your kc the same thing when your qp is less than your kp so what is mean by the q is smaller than the k simple the system is not at equilibrium okay when the q is not equals to the k is smaller than the k which means the system is not at equilibrium so let's see what is mean by q smaller than k so we know that the formula of q is equals to your product to the power of its coefficient over the reactant to the power of its coefficient okay and if the q right now is smaller than the k that means your q is small all right and when the q is small it means that the product that you produce is less or not enough and you can see this statement from the equation your q right now is small when your q is small over here guys that means the product over here is less agree so your q is smaller than the k because your product is less or your product is not enough so when your product is not enough what will the system do the system will force the reactant to change to product because you have not enough product your q is smaller than your k so your product is not enough yet therefore we will force the reactant to change to product okay and we know that in an equation your reactant will be on the left and then your product will be on the right so right now my product is not enough my product is less so what happened is i will force the reactant to change to a product i need to form more product so when your reactant need to change to the product your reaction will then shift from the left to the right that is your left that is your right and why are we shifting from the left to the right because we want to make sure more product is being produced okay so that is actually the function of your q all right when the q is smaller than your k the system is not at equilibrium and since right now the q is smaller than the k when it's smaller means the product is not enough right and since the product is not enough we need to make sure that the reactant produce more product and in which direction we can make sure the reactant changing to more product we will move from the reactant to the product which is from the left to the right okay simple easy all right so next what would be the condition we have the q equals to the k we have the q smaller than the k so the last but not least what happened when the qc is larger than the kc what happened when the qp is larger than the kp obviously when the q is larger than the k over here guys the system is not at equilibrium again right because it's not equal the moment the q is not equals to the k whether it's smaller or larger it means that your system is not at equilibrium right and what is mean by q larger than k again your q over here is equals to the product to the power of its coefficient over the reactant to the power of its coefficient and the way that i teach you i hope it's easier for you to understand because we will only focus on the q and the product all right it's not needed to compare to the reactant as well just compare to the product and you will get it since that the q right now is larger than the k in the other words my q is larger my q is higher directly proportional to the product when my q is higher 
That means our product is also higher. In the other words, your product right now is more. You already have extra product. So what happens when you have extra product? You have too many product that you should because your Q right now is larger than the K. So when your Q larger than K, you have a lot of product that you don't need. So what do we do? We reduce the product. So the problem arise is, how can I reduce the product? Simple, we will force the product to change back to reactant. Because it's obviously right now when your Q is larger than the K, your Q is having more product than you should. So we will force the product changing back to the reactant. Knowing that it's always your reactant on the left, product on the right. And right now, look at what we want. We want to change the product back to the reactant. Can you see that? Because my product is too high. We have too many products. So we want to change the product back to reactant. So when we change the product back to reactant, looking where you are moving, you have your right side and your left side. So where do you think your reaction is shifting to? Obviously, your reaction will shift from the right to the left. Okay, we are shifting from the right to the left because we have too many product and we want to reduce the product that we have. How do I know that my product is too much because my Q is larger than my K? Simple, easy. All right. So we have three conditions between your Q and your K. Your Q can be equal to the K, the system at equilibrium. Your Q can be larger than the K, where your system is not at equilibrium. And last but not least, you can have your Q smaller than your K, where it's also not at equilibrium, right? Okay, so we have three conditions that you need to know and understand why we need to shift from the left to the right or from the right to the left, all right? Let's try some example. All right, let's try to do some calculation. I have my example one over here. Question give to you KP. The question give KP means when the question give KP, the only things that we can compare is your QP. Make sure you compare with your QP, all right? And since it's talking about pressure, therefore we only take count of gas. First and foremost, check and make sure they are gas. And if they are not gas, we will ignore them. All right. Next, the question stated in one experiment, 0 0.56 ATM of HCl, 0 0.041 ATM of H2, and 0 0.033 ATM of Cl2 are introduced into a container. Can you see that the sentence over here did not mention a word about equilibrium? Therefore, all this value that given is not at equilibrium yet. Because in the entire sentence, there is not even a word of equilibrium. Alright? So, all this is not at equilibrium. You cannot substitute into the KP. You only can substitute into the QP. Okay? And the question asking, is the system at equilibrium? If not, which direction will it proceed? Let's see how to answer. So, first and foremost, what will we do? Take out all the value. You have the partial pressure of HCl which is 0 0.560 ATM. You have the partial pressure of H2 gas, which is 0 0.041 ATM. And then you have the partial pressure of Cl2 gas, which is 0 0.033 ATM. And bear that in mind, all the value that you have over here is not at equilibrium. Okay, you need to know that. Therefore, we cannot put into the Kp, we can only put into the Qp. As a result, write the formula of QP. Although the formula is the same, but label will be different. You cannot label them as your KP, all right? So is your QP over here, partial pressure of your hydrogen gas as a product to the power of one, partial pressure of your chlorine gas as a product to the power of one, and then over partial pressure of hydrochloric acid gas to the power of two due to the coefficient 2 over here. See that? Simple. And then put in all the value that you have for the partial pressure of hydrochloric acid, hydrogen gas, and chlorine gas. So hydrogen gas, 0 0.041. Chlorine gas, 0 0.033. And last but not least, your hydrochloric acid weapon, 
0 0.560 to the power of 2. Remember that. So press your calculator very, very correctly. Be very careful with all the bracket. Be very careful with all the power. Okay. If you press your calculator correctly, your QP calculator is 4.3144 times 10 to the power of negative 3. That is the QP calculator. All right. And then obviously, we are going to compare your QP and your KP. The KP given over there is a 5.36 times 10 to the power of negative 7. The QP calculated just now, 4.3144 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Always start your comparison with Q. Alright, if you look at the way that I answer, I will always start to compare by using the Q. So decide whether the Q is larger or smaller than the KP. It's a 10 to the power of negative 3. It's a 10 to the power of negative 7. Obviously, negative 3 is much larger than the 10 to the power of negative 7. So your QP over here is larger than your KP. And since your QP is larger than your KP, straight away, the first point will be the system is not at equilibrium, right? Because they are not the same. So if they are not the same, the system will be not at equilibrium. Make sense? And when the system is not at equilibrium, you need to think about the reaction shifting to the left or to the right. It's quite easy. Look at the product. Remember? Look at the product. So we know that this is our product. This is our reactant. And since your Q right now is larger than your KP, since your Q is larger than the KP, it means your Q is very large. When the Q is very high, it means the product is very high over here. When the product is very high, it means we have too many product. So when you have too many product, we need to decrease the product. How can we decrease the product? Simple. To achieve equilibrium, all right, we are going to change the product to reactant. Why do we need to change the product to reactant? Because we have too many product. All right, your product is more than what it should be. That's why your Q is larger than your K. So to achieve the equilibrium, you need to change the product to reactant. Knowing that your product is over here, your reactant is over here. So where is your reaction going to shift? Your reaction will shift from right to the left, okay? Your reaction will shift from right to the left because we are moving from the product to the reactant. The reason? Because the product is too much. We have too many products. When you have too many products, we are going to change back the product to the reactant, okay? Simple. That's it. That is how we answer the QCQP question. All right. So let's try another example over here. Your question started off with a KC value at 450 Kelvin. So the KC is given. KC is 23.5. That is the KC value. So since we are talking about KC at this moment, look like we are going to calculate the QC. All right. Not necessary. But when you are having KC, you must compare with QC. And if you are having KP, you must compare with QP. Alright, they must be in a pair with respect to the same thing. Alright, so it's a guess. It's a guess and we will take count of guess definitely. And in the question, stated that in one experiment, 4.75 mole of N2O4 and 3.22 mole of NO2 are introduced into a 500 milliliter container. Okay, look at the question again. They did not mention its equilibrium. Can you see the word? There is any equilibrium there? No, the question did not mention anything about equilibrium. Therefore, all this value given is the value not at equilibrium. Okay, since it's not at equilibrium, take it out. You have the number of mole of N2O4 not at equilibrium. 4.75 mole. You have the number of mole of your NO2 given, 3.22 mole not at equilibrium. You have a volume given, which is a 500 milliliter. And how do we proceed? The question gives you KC, all right? 
and you have the number of mole and a volume. So do we need to change it to Kp? No, we can stick with concentration because you have number of mole, you have volume. So what do we need to do before we calculate the Qc? Is you need to change the number of mole to concentration. So the concentration of N2O4 over here will be 4.75 divided by the mole divided by 0 0.5 liter. If you remember the formula of molarity is the number of mole divided by the volume but the volume must be in liter. So it's the number of mole divided with the volume in liter and you will then have the concentration of N2O4. And the concentration calculated is 9.5 molar over here. Another one is your concentration of NO2, where the number of mole is 3.22. The volume remains unchanged 0 0.5 liter. And the concentration calculated 6.44 molar. Okay, simple. And after you have all the concentration not at equilibrium calculated, bear that in mind, the number of mole is not at equilibrium. So the concentration also not at equilibrium. As a result, you can only calculate QC. So QC equals to the product NO2 to the power of 2 due to the coefficient over here. It's a gas and it's your product. So product versus reactant. Okay. So product over reactant, which is the concentration of N2O4 to the power of 1. Substitute in the concentration that you have just calculated, 6.44 to the power of 2, and then you have your N2O4, which is 9.5, all right? And press your calculator very, very correctly, and you will be able to get your QC. The QC calculator is 4.3656. That is our QC. By that in mind, the Kc is given. The Kc given is 23.5. The Qc calculator is 4.3656. And remember what I said just now? Always start comparing using your Qc. Okay, that will be the easiest way. Your Qc is larger or your Qc is smaller. Compare from your Qc. So your QC right now, obviously, 4.3 something over 23. Your QC definitely smaller than your KC. All right? And the first thing that comes into your mind when the Q is not equals to the K, guys, system not at equilibrium. And I think that is quite straightforward, okay? And when the Q is smaller than the K, it means that your Q right now is smaller than your K. So compare with who? Compare with your product. So right now, your product is also less because your Q is small. So when your Q is small, it means your product is less. In the other words, your product is not enough. So when the product is not enough, what do you think you need to do? Simple. We need to produce more product. And how can I produce more product? From the reactant changing to your product. So ask your reactant to produce more product, okay? So more reactant need to convert to product. And looking at the arrow that I draw above here, your reactant to your product. So obviously, we are shifting from where to where. Your reactant on the left, your product on the right side. So what is shifting? Your reaction is shifting. Reaction shift from left to right as simple as this and you got your full marks all right simple just make sure that the value given in the question is not at equilibrium that is the value that you put into your q and by that in mind when you compare make sure you are comparing your qc with kc your qp with kp and when you are comparing the easiest way will be comparing start with the q Identify your Q is more or less than the K. So starting with the Q will make your life easier, okay? And my method is always compare the Q to the product. So when your, pro when your Q is lower, that means your product is lower. In the other words, product is not enough. When the product is not enough, more reactants need to convert to product.
So when more reactant convert to product, you're shifting from the left to the right. Okay, simple. And the last example for this video, your example 3 over here. A reaction started with 3.5 atm of SO3, 2.89 atm of SO2, and 1.55 atm of O2. Okay, so obviously all of them are your gas. Okay, fair enough. And if you read the question very, very carefully, there is no words mentioned about equilibrium. So all of this is the value not at equilibrium. We don't know they are whether achieving equilibrium yet or not. Okay, it's not at equilibrium yet, or I would say that. Okay, so the question asking when the system reach equilibrium at room temperature, what is mean by room temperature, guys? 25 degrees Celsius. Your Kc is 0 0.0432. I hope you realize a problem. Everything given above is in pressure and everything is in ATM. So you know everything given is in pressure. But what happened is the question gives you Kc. So we agree on just now, if you have Kc, you must compare with your Qc. But right now, everything is given in ATM. Everything that not at equilibrium yet is given in pressure and ATM. So do I have my QC? No. So what can we do is very simple. We are going to maintain the pressure. All right, because there's too many to change. Therefore, over here, we will maintain the QP. All right. Since we are going to maintain the QP, what do we need to do to the KC? The KC need to change to your KP. I have a video talking about the relationship between KC and KP. I hope you remember that. So first and foremost, let's change the KC given back to the KP by using this formula. KP equals to KC bracket RT, gas constant temperature, delta M. So let's cross check everything first. Your KC is given, KC given 0. 0.0432. Your R must be a constant of 0 0.08206. Your temperature must be in Kelvin. So 25 degrees Celsius equals to 298.15 Kelvin. So you got your temperature ready. And last but not least, you need to find the delta N. So by that in mind, we already learned how to calculate the delta N in one of my videos. So delta N is the total gas in the product, which is 2 plus 1. So the total gas in the product is 3 minus the total gas in the reactant. So the total gas in the reactant is 2. Therefore, your delta N is a 3 minus 2. You have a positive 1 over that. Okay, that is your delta N. Substitute all the value into the formula. Therefore, you will have your Kp equals to your Kc 0 0.0432 given, your R 0 0.08206, your temperature 298.15 Kelvin to the power of 1, everything, your R and T to the power of 1. And obviously, press your calculator very, very correctly. And the Kp calculator is 1.0. Five six. That is the KP that we are going to use to compare with the QP that you have above. All right. So next, let's calculate the QP that we want to maintain just now. So the partial pressure of the SO three given three point five atm. The partial pressure of your SO two given two point eight nine atm. The partial pressure of the oxygen given, 1.55 atm. So you have everything that you need already. You only need one more thing, the formula of your QP. So formula of QP equals to the partial pressure of SO2 to the power of 2 due to the coefficient, okay? Times with the partial pressure of oxygen gas. Product, everything about product in the gaseous state over with the reactant in the gaseous state pressure, SO3 to the power of 2. And all the value is given. Substitute in, press your calculator correctly. And once you press your calculator correctly, 
the QP calculator is 1.056 as well. All right, do you realize that? It looks different from the beginning, but once you change it to your KP, your KP and the QP that you calculate is actually the same. Do you realize that? And I hope you realize that by now, your system right now is actually at equilibrium. Why your system at equilibrium? Because the QP calculator is equal to the KP. So when the QP calculator is equal to the KP of the system, what it means? It means that the system is at equilibrium. Alright, that's it. Simple. So bear that in mind, when you are having your KC, they only compare with your QC. When you are having a QP, your QP over here can only compare with your KP. So sometimes, don't follow exactly what the question gives to you. Alright, you need to convert it to what you want. The question started off with a KC, if you remember. Alright, but we cannot use the KC because everything is given in pressure and ATM. So what do we do is we change the KC into KP by using their relationship formula. Okay, and once you get the KP, we calculate as always, as usual, calculate the QP so that you can compare your QP and your KP calculated. Alright, when you compare them, you realize that they are exactly the same. They're equal to each other. When they're equal to each other, it means your system is at equilibrium. And when your system is at equilibrium, will the reaction shift? No, the reaction will not shift because it's already at equilibrium. Okay? I hope that this video able to help you to understand more about the relationship between QC and KC, the relationship between QP and KP, and how to we define the relationship, how to we determine whether the system at equilibrium or not. If you have any question regarding this subtopic, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching and make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in the next video. Pocket.com